Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Majority Element. It's an easy, we're going to jump right into it. Given an array nums of size n, return the majority element. The majority element is the element that appears more than n by two times. You may assume that the majority element always exists in the array. So we want to return the majority element that appears more than 50% of the time in our array. Example one, we have three, two, three. The majority here is three, so that is our output. Example two, we have the input nums of two, two, one, 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 two, two. Here, one appears three times, but two appears four times. So the majority is two, and that is what we output. And for a follow-up, could you solve this problem in linear time and in O of one space? Now, if we were to just brute force this problem, we could go through our entire input nums and just keep a dictionary, keeping track of all the elements we've seen and the counts, so how many times we've seen them. And in the end, just return the element with the most number of counts. But that wouldn't be O of 1 constant space. So how are we going to do this in linear time and O of 1 space? If we're ever unsure, if we don't know how to approach a problem, always, always, always take a step back and just work through examples. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Say I have an input nums of just the size 1. So n is going to be 1. Now, how many times does this majority element have to appear? It has to appear more than n by 2 times. It has to appear more than half. So it has to appear once, which means it's going to be the only element in my array of size 1. So let's call this element x, and we're going to be super generic with our example. So if I have a size of 1, it is going to be the only element in there. If I have a size of 2, my element has to appear more than n by 2 times. So it has to appear more than once which means it's going to be both the elements in my array of size 2. So it's going to be x and x. Now, what about 3? If I have 3, it has to appear more than 1.5 times. So it has to appear a minimum of 2 times. So say I have x and then x, and the third element could be anything. So let's call this y. Again, we're going to be super generic with it. And this is one possibility of what that array could look like. It could also be y, then x, then x, or it could be x, then y, then x, or it could just all be x's, x, x, and x. So if we look at this example right here, right, we have two x's and one y. How do we know x is the majority? It appears more than half. The x and y here would cancel each other out, and we would be left with our majority element of x, because it has to appear more than half the time. And same thing over here, if we have y as our first element, we come across a different element, these two cancel each other out and we're left with our majority element. doesn't matter which orientation we look at it, this y, x, or x, and then y. And if they're all x's, of course, we'll just have a count of three. What we want to do is keep track of the element we're on and the counts that we have. Now over here, we start with one x, so that's a count of one. We come across the same character, so that is a count of two. And once we come across our different character, we're just going to subtract from that overall count and we're still going to be left with our majority element. So let's look at example two over here. So I have example two over here, and we're going to start off with our first element, which is going to be two and the number of times we've seen this element. So right now, our first element is two and we've seen it once. Now, once we iterate through, the second element is also the same as the one we've been keeping track of. So we're just going to increment that count by one for a total of two. So far, we've seen two of these twos. Now we go to our next element. It is different than the one we we're keeping track of. So we're going to decrease this count by one. So now we have a count of one for element two. What this means is that the one and two have canceled each other out and we're just left with one extra two. So up until right now, the majority element is two and it's leading by a count of one. Now we come across our next element. It's different than the element we've been storing. So we're going to decrease that count to be zero. If count is zero, that means we have a perfect tie. There is no majority element so far. So up until this point, we are canceling all of our numbers out and we have no majority, which means the next element we see, this is going to be our new element. Since count was zero, we're going to start our counts over. Now this is our new element going to the next element. If it's different than the element we've been keeping track of, we just subtract. So right now we're again at a tie and we go to our next element since counts were zero, we start off with a new count element of two and count of one. Now we've gone through our entire input nums. So we know that this is the majority element. Once we've finished canceling everything else out, we're leading with element two by a count of 
one. And that is all we really need to do. As we iterate through our input nums, we're going to be keeping track of the element and the corresponding counts. If we come across the same element we've been keeping count of, we just increase that count, right? We've just seen more of that element. If it's different and our count isn't zero, we subtract by one. We want to decrease that count. This means that that element is still going to lead because the count is positive, but now it's leading by a smaller margin. Once it's zero, that means we are evened out. There is no majority. And we would start the counts again with our new element. In the end, whatever element we have is our majority, and we're guaranteed that it has to exist. So let's go ahead and code this up, and then we'll do a walkthrough to fully understand how it's going to work. Okay, to code this up, the first thing I want to do is keep track of my elements and their counts. So in the beginning, my element is going to be none. We have no element, and our counts are going to be initialized to zero. Now we want to loop through our nums. So for num in nums. We want to check what the counts are. If counts equals zero, then we want to set our current number to our element. That's a new number we're going to keep counts of. So element is going to equal this new number. Now, if our number equals the current element, we're going to increment counts by one. So counts plus equals one if element equals our number. If not, so else we're going to do minus one. And in the end, all we have to do is return element. So let's go ahead and submit this and it is accepted. Now let's walk through an example to fully make sure we understand exactly what is happening. Okay, say I have the following input nums, two, three, four, two, five, two, two. It is a length of seven. Now let's go through our code line by line. So in the beginning, my element is going to be none and my counts are going to be initialized to zero. Now we're going to loop through for every single number in nums. The first one we come across is two. Since counts are zero, our element now equals two. So now we're going to add one to counts if element equals num. Now the number we're on does equal element, so we're going to add one to our counts. We're going to go back in this for loop, move our number down. It's now three. Count is not zero, so we can't set our element to be number. But we see that element and our number aren't equal, so we're going to subtract. So now count is going to be zero, which means right now we're at a tie. So we're back in this for loop. We go to the next number, which is four. So our new element is now four. Four is what we're going to keep counts for now. So now we go in here, counts plus equals one if element equals number, which is true. So now we have one, four. Now we go back in the for loop and our new number is two. We don't set this to be number since count is one. But now two is not equal to four, so we're going to subtract. We're back to zero, which means we still don't have any majority element. Going back in this for loop, our number is now five. So this is the new element that we're going to keep counts for. And we're going to be adding one over here since element equals five. Going back into this for loop, n is now two, our number is now two. Counts are not zero, so this is not our new number. And we check if element equals num. It does not, so now we're gonna subtract one from count. So we're back to zero, which means up until this point, we don't have a majority. Everything is being canceled out. Now for this final for loop, we go back in here. Number is now two. Count is zero, so our element is now two. And we make a check. If element equals our number, we're going to add one to count. Otherwise, we're going to subtract. But here we add one to count and we return our current element, which is two. So two is going to be our majority element here. And we can see that is correct. Two appears four times and the length of our nums is seven. So this is going to be linear in time. We go through our entire input nums just once. So that is O of n. And we only really keep track of our element and count. So that is going to be O of 1 for space. And we just went ahead and solved majority element. If you have any questions whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.